Hello, my name is John Patatsky and I'm one of the nurses at Upstate Medical University Hospital where we believe that knowing changes everything. Today I want to talk to you about sickle cell disease, a disease of the red blood cells that causes the red blood cells to be misshapen and because of this they cannot carry enough oxygen to the rest of the body. Because of their bad shape they also have the tendency to clump together and cause little blood clots in the rest of the body. Sickle cell patients have uh, three complications that everyone needs to watch out for. In other words, the patient needs to be aware of them, the uh, healthcare team and the loved ones surrounding the patient need to know that the patient with sickle cell disease is at risk for several complications. Today I want to talk to you about stroke. I want to talk to you today about acute chest syndrome as well as the pain crisis. And for sickle cell patients, the idea of these three complications is nothing new, but sometimes I want to give you just a little bit of uh, uh, a few tips and possibly a, a, a few ideas about managing your disease well and managing your disease efficiently. When a patient has sickle cell disease, their red blood cells are bent out of shape and because of this they clump together. This makes them have a high risk of stroke. And when a patient has a stroke, this means that less oxygen is coming to the brain. And because of this, the part of the brain that has less oxygen because of a blockage or a bleed, the section of that brain loses function. So when a patient has a stroke, this is any patient, when a patient has a stroke they can have slurred speech, they can have weakness on one side of the body, they can also have uh, uh, confusion and uh, uh, signs and symptoms that show that their brain is not working very well. When a patient uh, has acute chest syndrome, a patient with sickle cell disease, it is basically a, an episode where they are unable to breathe as well. And because of infection or fluid in the lungs. And when they come into the emergency room because they can't breathe well, the doctor orders a chest x-ray and sure enough they see that there is fluid on the lungs. When the doctor sees that there is fluid on the lungs, uh, the patient may also have a fever. The patient with sickle cell disease may also have a cough. Uh, wheezing when they breathe and generally a hard time breathing. So the tolerance for uh, sickle cell patients and fever uh, is very low. In other words, when a patient with sickle cell disease comes to the emergency department and has even the slightest bit of a fever, the doctor and the nurses are very quick to start treating that patient with antibiotics, with IV fluids, uh, possibly blood transfusions. All these are things are necessary to treat the patient with sickle cell disease. So if you are watching out for acute chest syndrome, watch out for wet sounding lungs, watch out for shortness of breath, watch out for a fever, even the slightest. These are all reasons to come to the emergency department. And lastly, a patient with sickle cell disease has the risk for having a pain crisis, which is basically a, an episode where uh, there is unbearable and unstoppable pain. What this means is that the patient has medications that are prescribed over a long period of time for them by the doctor, and because of certain uh, stressors in life, a pain crisis occurs and the pain does not go away, nor is it helped by pain medications that have been prescribed. The signs and symptoms of pain crisis are very simple. They are pain all over the body that is uncontrolled and is unable to be medicated by pain medications that have been prescribed previously. And so some triggers of a pain crisis can include dehydration, when you're not getting enough fluid. And so when you come into the emergency room, expect that the doctor will order some IV fluids. Also, stress can be a cause of a pain crisis. When the patient is stressed, 
uh, emotionally or physically, this can cause a pain crisis to occur. Patients who are pregnant who uh, have uh, sickle cell disease should uh, receive counseling before and during their pregnancy uh, so that the doctor could help them understand how pregnancy affects their sickle cell disease. As well, things like alcohol and tobacco may also cause a sickle cell crisis. A patient with sickle cell disease should also be aware that anxiety and, like I said, stressors, uh, how they can affect uh, their pain crisis and cause them to have a pain crisis. A patient with sickle cell disease must also be aware that too much exercise is not good for them. Too much exercise is perceived by the body as stress and can cause these red blood cells to be produced as sickle cell. And so uh, stressors mainly and dehydration and different things that cause our emotions to stress, they can cause a pain crisis. The patient with sickle cell disease needs to know some tips about uh, how to manage their disease. The uh, sickle cell patient uh, needs to be very aware of how to manage work and relaxation. Uh, too much work is not healthy for the body because it is perceived as stress by the body. And so the patient with sickle cell disease needs to know how to manage time, work, and stress and balance it with enough relaxation. At the same time, the patient uh, needs to know how to form positive relationships with other people. Finding a group of people that supports them, finding a group of people that cares for them and knows their disease. In fact, knows all of the complications that can happen if the disease is not managed well. A patient with sickle cell disease also needs to understand life stages. For example, it's very hard for a young person to enter into adulthood, especially if they have sickle cell disease. The reason being is that there are many support systems for children. Uh, parents take care of children, but when a person comes into adulthood with sickle cell disease, there needs to be an independence and there needs to be a time where they say to themselves, I am taking control of this disease. So a sickle cell patient also needs to educate themselves. And so we would encourage you, we at Upstate would encourage you to educate yourself. Uh, ask your nurse to give you information about sickle cell disease. Ask your nurse to educate you and talk to you about stressors in your life, uh, ways which you can manage stress. And so uh, we hope that this information has helped you. Uh, of course, in order to review, we need to know that sickle cell patients are at risk for stroke, acute chest syndrome, and a pain crisis. And we need to know that uh, decreasing stressors in our lives helps us to manage our disease better and helps us to live better lives. Thank you.